Let the public hearing get started. Okay. This meeting will come to order. Training. Like crazy. Yeah. Thank you. For next year. <laughs> uh, in attendance is Brian Carlisle, Stanley Skip Smith, and Cindy Grant. And we're starting the meeting early today so that we can have a public meeting on the culvert replacement. And we have uh, Randy. Randy, I apologize, I didn't catch your last name. Barrows. Randy Barrows is here from the main DOT. He'll be uh, speaking to that. The floor is yours, sir. All right. My name's Randy Barrows, project manager of the main DOT. Uh, this is Robin Dosti, she's court reporter for the department. I uh, will document the comments of the meeting here tonight. If you have any questions as I go through the project, please state your name and so your concerns can be recorded and, and addressed accordingly. Uh, the project location is located approximately seven tenths of a mile east of the Dixmont Newburgh town line in on the Kennebec Road. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is to discuss the proposed detour and any concerns that might be associated with it from the residents or municipal departments. First, I'll just briefly introduce the project. The scope of the project is to replace, and there's two pipes out there right now, a 30 inch and a 36 inch diameter corrugated metal pipe. We'll be replacing that with a single eight foot corrugated metal pipe. Uh, the proposed roadway template will be 11 foot paved main line and four foot paved shoulders. The actual actual segment length of the road work that will be repaved is approximately 100 feet. Uh, that won't carry through the whole length of the Kennebec Road. Uh, proposed advertised schedule will be advertising the project November 8th, 2017. Construction will take place sometime after July 15th and between October 1st for the in-stream work window. That's a inland fisheries requirement that the work be done during that time frame. Railway negotiation has already taken place or is in, in process. The uh, proposed detour route is Route 202 and 9 and Route 69. Adds approximately two plus or minus miles to an existing five mile through trip on the Kennebec Road. We'll be allowing the contractor to detour for a duration of five consecutive calendar days, uh, be it Monday to essentially Friday night. With, you know, they'd have to have it open by Saturday morning. The department and contractor will hold a pre-construction meeting prior to the project. Uh, that'll happen sometime next year, probably in the June in the June time frame. Uh, we'll have, we'll give the municipal officials and departments an opportunity to attend the meeting so we can air out any further concerns at that point in time as we get near the actual detour. Uh, and with the work being almost a year out now, it's, it'll be good to refresh everybody's mind. They're going to pinpoint a, I mean, I'm right at that driveway yes. so they're going to pinpoint i mean july to november is kind of big wide scope of yes effort. yeah and and by by june 15th we'll we'll require the contractor to pin down the schedule and uh, at that point they'll they will uh we'll require them to give a 10-day notice prior to the actual closing of the road as well This certain spe specific notification requirements that we require, uh, like I said, it'll be 10 days prior to the day before and the day of the road closure. They will notify all the button property owners, the town officials, county sheriff, fire, local, state police, rescue service, school, post office, chamber of commerce, uh, any large employers, DMV commercial carriers and the main DOT region office. Uh, I guess I would bounce the question off the 
select board. Is there any employers in the in the area that would? It's pretty rural and residential. I can't imagine. Piper Mountain is the only thing that we hear out for there. We're talking. When does it have to be done? It would be done by October first. They might be shipping trees by then, but I. I actually spoke with him. You did just a few days ago. I think if they go, they go out through Dixmont anyways. They don't usually come down into Newburgh. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, they will put up a changeable message board at both ends of the project, probably at either our end of 202, 10 days prior to and through the duration of the road closure, uh, as well as by placing a newspaper ad. The department has a specification, will hold the contractor to, uh, if they do not complete the road closure within a specified time frame, we would charge a liquidated suppl suppl excuse me, supplemental liquidated damages at a rate of $1,000 per day that they go beyond the five day road closure. Is there any specific concerns with the proposed road closure? My only question, will that bother the milk truck that comes out of the dairy farm there? Could you please spit your name? Glenda Hamilton. Thank you. Uh, which? It's Misty Meadows. Silver Mountain. Silver Mountain. Silver Mountain. Four Piper Mountain. It's just beyond Piper Mountain. Yeah, it's like three houses past Piper Mountain. OK. Just, okay. it's even closer to the We can contact. Them to find out what this guy does. Yeah, speed trucks and stuff coming through too. Okay. But the milk truck would be exactly. I daily, I think he's on a daily ship. Okay. It would, uh, like I say, it would just be a matter of maybe accessing from the opposite end of the the, 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 the normal trip. That would be would be the possible difference there. Tracy Martin. Um, what does it do to the school bus? Because they go down and turn around at Piper Mountain, I think. Do you know what's in there? I think they, they go beyond. There's somebody that gets picked up a couple beyond of Beyond there. Yeah. So what would happen to the school bus? I will speak to the superintendent of the schools. They would have to make arrangements otherwise to, if, if the detour is within the school, school year, they would have to make arrangements to get through the other. Hi there. Hi. How are you? This Good. <laughs> Very sorry. Good. At six o'clock on the no, brain. No problem. The plumber in the <laughs> We were just speaking about the proposed detour for the replacement of the culvert on Kennebec Road. Just to bring you up to speed, we'll be advertising the project in November. The actual construction won't take place until July of 2018, okay. sometime in between July and October 1st. Uh, we're allowing a five day road closure. And then we're just looking to hear any concerns that might be associated with the detour. Hey, Beth White. Sorry. Thank you. Um, what time do they usually start? And do they start like at six o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning or it varies from contractor to contractor i would say it's between six and seven okay i thought legally they couldn't start before seven no no the only the only requirement that we would have that would keep them from working a certain time frame this would just be daylight requirements okay. now again beth white um my driveway's right there. Is that going to affect my driveway when they're working on? I mean, we will make sure that. Am I going to have to get an, another driveway put up further up? No, it shouldn't. Shouldn't affect your driveway. And if, if it does, we will. The department will accommodate. I mean, not that I have to go to work, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll make accommodations. Not that I want so to work. I should say. Okay. Is are you talking about you're going to repay where the culvert is going? Yes. Is there any plans to repay any more of that Kenny Beck Road? 
I am not positive. I would have to check with uh, White Capital Paving Schedule. But I think it may be within the next year or two, but speaking off the top of my head, I can't say for sure. They do those two years in advance, don't so they? He's going to have the paving schedules? Yes. Because I have, it's not the next year or two. I have the one, the current one, and there's nothing on there. The only one was on the old 69. Okay. I can, uh, I can check into that and let you know where that may fall. So, again, Beth White, are they going to be doing any, um, not ditching, but the water flow? I just got a message from the post office saying that our mailbox is not being able to be accessed because when the runoff comes, it's just washing it away. So, I'm sure that has a lot to do with the mess of the culvert area. So, I didn't know how far up they were going to fix that water flow. I know she came by and talked to me. That was a couple of months ago. Without going up. I forget. Look at this project. I'm not sure oh, okay. whether that will affect it or not. We may, may do a little bit of shoulder work on either end of the job just to make sure that water is getting off the roadway and shoulder. Gets closer yeah. next year. And the specific dates. Yep. yep. And I will leave a few of my business guys over there if anybody wants to take one, has, has any concerns later on, they can take up. Thank you. And Randy's also going to leave us uh, construction maps of, of the project. Can we break the town office? Yeah. Anybody that may be in we go too far, I'm so sorry, but I know you have your meeting to start. I just want to make sure I know who's who, for my record. We have speakers, but I know you're... Brian Carlisle. And I'm sorry, Renee O'Donnell, the, the one that's perpetually late. <laughs> O'Donnell? O'Donnell. It's Donald like the name Donald. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> What's that? Wrong. Wrong. Good. Thank you. Can you describe one of these? This is the old gun. Oh, okay. Okay. I just want to have that. All right. Thank you. Did you get Skip Smith's name? I did. Okay. I know he, we got the panels introduced, but I wanted to make sure I had it clear on my notes when I prepare it. Yes. <laughs> All right, do, do we want to wait till 6? I know I opened the meeting early. What time? Well, no, it's advertising. Yeah, uh, are you guys all set? I mean, you're. Yep, yeah, you just got to go. We just, we're just all ready to go. Okay. All right, so the meeting has already been opened. Um, roll call is Renee, Brian, and Skip. Yes, please. Those are the ones she's already are these all on here? I don't believe so. Do you want me to put them on here? Uh, yes. The last one here is the 20, number 23. Hold on just a second. I'll, I'll let them make a sign. Up. I'd like to read it after the meeting, okay. if that's okay. So, I can 
We're we can leave it off if you want. Okay, let's just leave that off. These I ones that are on here. I don't want to do 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 do. So let's put this. Is, we'll just add AP warrant. And this is. Does that say twenty four? Is that what twenty four? Probably it is in the next class. Twenty four. Yeah. Okay. AP warrant twenty four, and the total is four thousand one hundred eighty seven dollars. And 78 cents. Okay, so you can do the public comment for Yep, we'll uh, do we've done the public hearing. Yeah, I'll sit there. Any public comments? Hi, everybody. <laughs> no? No public comments. Okay. So we'll go on to the warning. Um, I'll just read these. And then um, make a motion. So um, I make a motion that we accept as re as um, read AP warrant number eleven for one thousand six hundred sixty dollars and seventy five cents. AP warrant number twelve for one thousand one hundred seventeen dollars and six cents. PY warrant number thirteen for five thousand eight hundred ninety two dollars and forty two cents. AP warrant number 14 for $11,129.94. AP warrant for $4,451.48. PY warrant number 16 for $3,631.03. AP warrant number 17 for $100,609.99. AP warrant number 18 for $1,000. $63 even. AP warrant number 20 for $1,000, uh, excuse me, $13,800. Wait a minute, what has she got? $138,200. $138,000, here we go. $138,200. Oh, sorry. $138,000, dollars no cents. AP warrant number 21 for $137.12. AP warrant number 22 for $3,371.25. PY warrant number 23 for $6,727.60 and AP warrant number 24 for $4,187.78. I make a motion that we accept these warrants as read. Second. All in favor? We, we had public comment, Linda. So there's not going to be any questions about any of these warrants and the amounts? No. Do, like you, you, want to, you could address it with Cindy. Um. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, we don't have any minutes here, do no. we? Jeez. Okay. Them up now. All right. So let's move on to the department reports. The fire department. How are you, Ralph? Oh, not too bad. Good. We had four calls in the month of August. Um, our meetings are going to start up tomorrow night and on a weekly basis. Uh, going to be Tuesday nights. Okay. <clears throat> going to begin host testing and doing some of that kind of stuff. Still holding at eight members right now, currently. Um, we've made a. We've got officers now. We've got Drew Wilt back as my assistant chief. Okay. Um, Sean Ross as a lieutenant. Mm -hmm. um, so is it Neil Asco. Uh, he's also the training officer as well. I received a new pump for the pump house. Um, I just received a forestry grant. We're working. I got to work on what we're going to do with that. What we're going to put in for, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, I'll get back to you on that, I guess. Okay. And the tanks on the floor were drained and refilled with cement. And the floor has been fixed, so that's, that's behind us. <clears throat> And that's pretty much what I got, I guess. Okay. Do you have anything to add, Cindy? Always very Okay. Very good. 
Um, rescue? Uh, nothing to add other than what's in your report there. We're okay. fine. Okay. So, um, so just to work just a hundred hours. Uh, we're finalizing the purchase of the turnout gear that was approved during the MMA grant last year. Okay. So that should be done here in the next two or three days. Okay. That's the uh, gear that's funded two thirds of the way by the MMA. Okay. And today, Cindy and I worked on an ergonomics grant to uh, replace some chairs and keyboards. Okay. Uh, keyboards that came with the computers are just far too compact for larger hands. I'd like to hear the word grant. Yes. <laughs> In that. Okay. Is that, is that all, Chris? That is all. Mm -hmm. I will say it's nice to have you guys here. Yes. You know what I mean? Just like that. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, library. How are you, Gary? Oh, good. Oh, good. Do you have anything new? No. Just need some volunteers? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Cindy, town manager, resignations. Um, Adrian Smith um, submitted his resignation from the planning board. Yes. Um, I was hoping that Dennis would get back to me. They had a meeting last week, and they were going to discuss it new channel and stuff. Um, Adrian's just got some family stuff going on. He needs to take some time off. And okay. Said he'd possibly be back. But do we do we have alternates all in line yes. for the planning board? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Dennis was going to get in touch with them, and, but he was out today, so he didn't get back to me. Okay. So all right. But we'll get him in place. And, um, I gave you a copy of the perk. Notice that they sent out um, everything. We I didn't know anything. I don't get the paper, so I don't see this sort of stuff. But they evidently had an incident, um, and they just wanted to assure everybody that it wasn't due to neglect on their part. It was purely an accident. So okay. Um, we'd like to or um, organize a uh, another fundraiser. Um, We've had some people donate some stuff um, that we could have a yard sale, a rummage sale sort of thing, um, and had other people call. Um, so Ralph and Chris and I are going to organize um, probably mid-October uh, another fundraiser for um, the little Brennan Oh, Hall. okay. All right. Great. Um, the kitchen license on the application has gone in. Mm -hmm. um, so the inspection should be taking place any time. And so we should have that in hand, I would assume, very shortly. I don't know what the process is, but the school's hand would. Okay. okay. Um, I was approached um, by East, uh, Eastern Area on Aging that does the monthly dinner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, that we possibly might um, do the government food. We have no drop-off area in this area for people out here. They have to go clean to Bangor and they ask that we would possibly be a pickup spot <coughs> for distributing the government food that um, they give out. Okay. And um, I told her as long as we could do it, they do all the paperwork, the people do it through their office, they just bring the food here. Okay. It's all divvied up as to who gets what, and the people just pick it up here. So they've got it all prepackaged, labeled for each family yes. that's that's done their pay. They, yep. We don't have to do anything. Nope. We would just be the. No, nope. I don't. So. Provide the facility for them to do it. Yeah. Right. No, I told them. I said as long as it's you know we don't have to have special hours and we can do it during the hours that we're open. There's no. I. Yeah. I didn't I, see any problem with it. I. Glad to help them. Is there any way to work it with the food bank, or are they really? Too this different? is separate from the food bank. This is a pro. This is a program all on its own. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. Do you? Do you got you all set? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. 
I'd stay away from the Newburgh Food Bank for a while. <laughs> Till they get settled. They've just Til signed up in the church. And what's going on and all of that does not add yeah, exactly. another okay, issue not. in another issue in the whole matter. Right. Okay. Um that's all I that's all you have? Cemetery committee's not here. No. No. Okay. How about roads? Um, I do have a couple of things on roads. Okay. Uh, I can take care of a couple of the Dahlia Farm culvert. Um, I went down this morning. Um, they were setting the cement embutment things that right. the culvert's going to sit on. Um, they are a little bit behind schedule, but not bad, maybe a bit. Right. Um, I had to call Tim again. We have more beaver. Oh. Up on the little field road, um, he's coming, I'm going to meet him tomorrow morning. Um, to those two, three or four foot culverts. If you take a left at Tapley Farm and head towards Winterport, right. you go by um, that house right on the corner, and before you get to Aaron's house, Dumont's is the next one on the left, right down um, in just mm -hmm. past the people's yard. There's two, three or four foot culverts there, and it's really high on one side and about normal on the other side. And I got down and looked inside, and sure enough, the little buggies have <laughs> all about both three quarters full. So I called come. Tim, and Tim's going out tomorrow morning and, and um, pull it out and, and, give, and put some traps in. That's why they call them busy beavers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No. You shouldn't have laid more off. Get a couple of shotguns. <laughs> All right. So, um, want to just go to new business, or you want to yeah. go to? Okay. Let's go to the general assistance ordinance. So, um, you're going to open another public hearing? Yeah. That's okay. good. You're gonna have to guide me through this a little bit. So I'll make a motion that um, we open a public hearing. It's about 6.03. I don't know if the time makes any difference, but uh, we'll open a public hearing for the general assistance ordinance. And I'm willing to uh, have any comments from the public. Sorry. All in favor? You in favor. Okay. Okay. Anybody? Um, Let's go through this just real quick. This is just uh, a minute. We did these last year. The the minimums. Yeah, the the state says yeah. for us to process general assistance. We have to do one every year. Yeah. Okay. So that's the signature page. These are overall maximums. I'm, I'm sure this is all very standard. I, I, I'll confess I haven't read the general assistance ordinance. But I'm more than willing to support it. The ones I read don't look any different. I don't know if the number is quite bad, but the ones we did years ago were the same thing. Right, I think it's a... Every year the, the, the state sets the change. guidelines, okay. and you guys adopt them. Okay. So, um, do you guys have any comments about the general assistance ordinance we're about to adopt? Um, no. What does it say? Well, what it does um, is, uh, Tracy, it's just set, it sets um, the amounts of money is that about my reading? This what it says right? is um, the maximum income that they can have. The guidelines we go to, to qualify them. basically, and then it sets the right. amount yeah. that they can get. So we're just saying, oh, okay, we go by these guidelines. Yes. Right. This, okay. The state provides us with the guidelines. Gotcha. So yes, Linda. Is this the one that the state also reimburses? Yes. For fifty percent. Yes. Um, any other comments? Would you like a motion on this? Yep, I'm going to sign this. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we adopt the general assistance ordinance as written. Second. All in favor? 
I'll, I'll fast. Okay, so emergency management. Brian, I'm going to let you take the floor here. Well, I asked uh, <clears throat> Cindy a while ago to thinking of what uh, was going on in Houston and now obviously Florida, you know, where we stand with our emergency preparedness function of the town. I know we have this building that, that serves in that capacity. But over the years, I've heard statements made about the building, how the water quality, uh, issue. Uh, I remember hearing the questions uh, asked about cots and other items that were purchased for the purpose of emer emergencies and I remember it being said at that time that people recognized that things were purchased but nobody had any idea where they were. So I thought maybe we should open it up for a discussion to see if we want right. to build a plan and we want to get educated that Right. and so forth of what our uh, obligations are. <clears throat> Cindy's reply was, uh, she has taken care of a lot of those things. We do have some items available that in the need of an emergency. Uh, and I also understand that there's a class coming up. Yeah, yeah I gave you a copy. Um, this 402 class um, is going to be October 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. And this is the mandatory training um, for public officials to take in order for us to be NIMS compliant. And it educates boards on what, you know, what's expected of you and, and all of that. I stuff. just wanted to make sure that we're prepared and that we're proactive and not reactive if, if right. you know, something comes up and so we I was need hoping, to react. I was hoping you and Brian could take it. Okay. Skip and I's already taken it. Okay. So yeah, I'm not getting out of this. I took it already. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make that sound like what it is, but I'm taking it already. Okay. Skip and I and Jim Hopkins took it uh, three years ago. Yeah. Do we adopt a policy that, that the state has for that sort of thing, or do we have our own town? For what? Uh, just emergency preparedness and how we have an emergency operations plan. Yes, we do. Is I had to update it when we got the grant, mm -hmm. and I can get your copy of it yeah. if you'd like. Okay. I remember the last time that we had anything. Uh, I don't even know. If, did we? Well, you guys might remember. We use a shelter. This school is a shelter during the ice storm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought so. We used it just. I don't know when Serena was here. We used it too. Okay. I opened it up. I think it was for a snowstorm. Was that another, it was a, we had another ice storm? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but a lot of paperwork you had to fill out. Okay. Well, one of the big things that came to light, or at least I was thinking about, if we've got this facility and we have water that we can't use, that at some point I think we ought to address that, at least to have potable water available okay. for this, you know, if we, if. God forbid we ever had a major disaster that we had to house a lot of people here. We'd have to have some, right. you know, a lot of drinking water. Now, Cindy's made arrangements with Red Cross to, to have water brought in, but if, you know, time is of the essence and say you can't get here. But beyond that, I think, you know, with a facility like this, we ought to fix the water. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking that same thing. What What is, the water is got too much? On a normal basis, it, it's okay. We get a rainstorm or like in the spring when it's really wet and soupy and we get um, infiltration into the well, oh, which is bacteria. Right. 
they bleach it once a month. Um, but, and I sent, I believe, the water test yeah. to you, um, the last one we had, which was fine. But it does have to be bleached. They, they, there's signs up that they can't drink it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's all right for washing dishes or, you know, that sort of thing. Right? I don't think the case is down. Far. But right. we, uh, but we have yeah. bottled water and we have four to eight of the five gallon replacements for the water fountains at any given time and when I did the shelter grant and got the radios and the cots and the blankets and the pillows and all of that stuff um, I worked with the Red Cross and you know they they will because we are a designated shelter they will keep in contact and get us supplies and that sort of stuff. You know, we don't, one of the things that, that I've tried to figure out is how to have emergency, for example, if we have people coming in here at two and three o'clock in the morning, you know, you know, coffee and, you know, uh, just snacks and stuff that you could have, but any for the amount of time and, and uh, for the amount of time that we, you know, we'd wait for a Red Cross to get something here, but right. you know, I guess how, it's something. How much, how much do we have on hand? Uh, how many people would it take here? 100, 200? Water? Yeah. We don't have any food on hand. You don't have any food on hand, okay. Um, water, like I said, we have the four, four dispensers that we have in right. the building, and we have eight to 10 replacement jugs. Right. Um, on the things. And this water here, if it's boiled, it's okay. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. So. Now the Department of Health, if with a functioning kitchen, they're going to require water tests. And I don't we know have one every quarter. We're required to have one every quarter. Yes, will it satisfy the Department of Health? For yeah. That's what I sent you was the quarterly one that we have to do. The school, they bring it comes up and does it. They send me the kit and he comes up every quarter and takes the sample and sends it up. Okay. So. But the building does need a new well. It's the only way to cure the problem. Mm. Mm. And it needs to be away from the building. I, I've explained this. The, the roof on this building has little spouts for it to drain off. There's one in that corner. I think there's one in that corner headed that way, and there's the one in the middle. Right. This one here drops right on the septic tank. I remember. That's why it's three years ago the tank filled up and froze. Right. The other one comes off the roof and hits right on the well, right. the well casing. So it saturates the ground, and if you look at the well, the thing's heaved and hard, so it must be getting in, it must be cracked. So, so it doesn't. It needs I wonder to, if we could. Can, is there any? Have we ever ever um, questioned about whether we could divert the water away from that well? I have. Yes. Yes. I know. We. I. I. We see it pour out here right yeah. on top of the second yeah. tank. Well, I know. The same that. way on the back. <clears throat> it hits right on the well. Right. But it's still not going to, you know, change the fact that even significant rain and wet spring, it infiltrates because... Oh, I see. They, Something's they, wrong down below. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. the well should be further away from the building. Right. Because if they hit ledge, right. there's some so, cases. Is there any kind of grant yeah. for that? Is, I mean, would there be any I kind of would have to contact the school to oh. see... Right, because they still... That was one of my yeah. questions, whether it would be an MSAD problem at this point. Yeah. We pay half. We pay half of everything like that. Might be the time to do it. Yeah. 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 And then the family wife will they bail on. <laughs> so. <laughs> so but I will look into the water situation. So and maybe with just resetting the casing. I know at some mm -hmm. point you can do yeah, that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Those things pop up a little bit and then you get, get the yeah. groundwater in. Right. And that should be a major project to just divert the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we the, could we could look into getting an estimate to to look at the, see how much it would cost to reset yeah. the casing and, yeah. and try that first. Yeah. Just pound yeah. it down, follow. Yeah. They have inspection cameras for that. Yeah. Yeah, Ted does, yeah. I 
Teddy, Teddy, uh, Ted, uh, no, Carmen, no, no. Yeah. So are you two available yes, for that yeah, class? I, yeah. I think I am. I'm, that was. Let me just look at one thing. It's from six to eight, and it's going to be here. I offered. Michelle. Yeah, the 11th. Aren't you good? So it's going to be right I'll look when I can know. There it is. I'm pretty sure I'm all set. Because I'll call her and sign you yeah, up. Yeah. I'm having a hard Monday. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Did you get bad news? No, actually, I just like didn't sleep all night last night, but I got good news. <laughs> good. I did get good news. Yes, I'll be here on the 11th. Okay. Yes, I'm all set. And it's pretty much like a PowerPoint presentation. That's all it is. You said okay. PowerPoint. Okay. That's all we did. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, so you're gonna you're gonna. Put the water thing back on the agenda. Yep. And let's look into it because if we if we were going to spend money now, now would be the time to spend money when somebody else is picking up the other half. But and uh, we could talk to them about that. Um, you want to move on to old business, Cindy? You ready? For yep. The old town hall update. Um, Chuck has started this weekend. He took the decks off and took the skirting off. Um, he's trying to finish up a house. Hopefully, first part of this week he should be done. Okay. But he's going to work weekends until he gets it done. So um, he is working on that. Okay. All right. In the abandonment of the tent. Yeah, I've explained that's all done. They're filled. The floor is fixed. Wonderful. Wonderful. All good there. The building inspection. inspection. I have. Um, Had a list of names. I have Chris and Ralph, Dwight, um, and Austin Toothaker. Um, I'm still looking for a fifth one, um, but those are the four that I have. If you want them to get started, I kind of like a outline of what you'd like them to do, I guess, because that's the first <coughs> person they ask me. Um, I still have a problem with not fixing the iron up there. Wow. So without a committee. Yeah, I think some things we probably should address. I mean, the wiring but, is terrible. Yeah. I read the, the report numerous times. The report has a few items that really need to be addressed ASAP. That need to be addressed mm -hmm. ASAP rather than, I know what a committee works like, I've been on plenty of them. Okay. And it, it, it takes time to get good results. Yep. Okay. Well, if there's wiring problems up there that, I'm just worried that something would, Bare wires showing up right. in the attic right. is going to somehow just possibly burn the fire station down, along with six hundred thousand dollars worth of truck and equipment under it. So what you're saying is we should act on some maybe that item before the committee. At least that one. Okay. And I've been trying to think you know, right before the committee. Right. Right. Because say the committee takes six or eight months. Well, so then, what, you know, it's just possible. That's what, what's that's what yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. I agree with that. But I don't like having bare wiring in the attic or a fire station with that much gear, yeah. equipment underneath the roof. Yeah, there's a lot of well, there's a lot of uh, junction boxes that are open too. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of well, in that. There's no need of that. No. There's a lot of equity up there inside the building, not the building right. itself. No, there's no, a lot of the building's not. Guns. I'm not worried about the building. I'm worried about the fire trucks and the equipment that's yeah. all under the cover. Exactly. All right. Um, you want to make a decision to get it looked at and get an estimate on it? 
At least I part of it. I think we. I. I, I think. I That's think he's the right. only part that I, I agree, agree with. You shouldn't have open junction boxes no. laying around. But there are other things as well too that really should be addressed. That even if it's the, on a temporary basis, to slow down the, the, the weather penetration, the rot that's taking place. Right. Right. Um. I think that well, why don't we uh, let the committee address that? <coughs> Do you think we have to let the committee address that or just I, I think the electrical I think is we, a real hazard. Yes. I but I think we have to address everything that needs to be uh addressed done in a in a very uh, fast manner. Okay. Because I as I recall too there was a, a issue with the door where it was so wide open. With weather penetration with that. Mm -hmm. The past door? That's no, the, um, the big doors yeah. are <clears throat> trimmed out and they're exposed to the weather and they're showing signs of rot already, you know, water infiltration. And the reason I say that, I mean, if we, if a decision is made to salvage that building, we have to stop the decay as soon as we can. <clears throat> and I'm not talking about redoing the whole building, but there were just some issues in that report that required immediate attention. But that's the biggest percentage of everything is, is the rot on the according to that according to that paper. I know that. So but I think some of those things could be done at least to temporarily close close up some of those areas. And then a decision made whether we go after the whole building or Okay. Um, we did fix the door. I had to because of the insurance company, the little yeah. door that you could see outside. Right. And uh, Austin fixed that, didn't yes. he? Yes, yeah. Austin fixed that. Um, so, um, well, <coughs> and you know, we're still taking season to get a contractor to do some of this stuff. We may be out of luck. Um, but you yes, know, definitely on the electrical, we ought to get that done. Right. Let's 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 start there. Let's do this. Let's. Um, get some names, you know, call a few electrical contractors. Or who do you usually use, Will? Will. You could have Will go in and at least look at what we've got and give us an estimate on the repair just to to close that in. I mean, to repair the fire danger. The fire, right, the immediate danger. fire danger. You know, open yeah, junction. Do that. Open junction boxes in your fire station is not a good thing. It's just not a good thing. And they've been there for years and years and time to fix them. Yeah, yeah. So let's do that, Cindy. Okay. And then, um... As far as the uh, committee, what if we, uh, as a board, wrote a mission statement for them? Right. With what we would like them to, you know, okay. accomplish. Okay. Well, they need, they need some sort of a need statement to, to go right. Right. Some sort what of direction they had in. Right. Right. Yeah, we could do that through so email. So do that through email yeah. so we can be ready to go in the next meeting. Say. Yeah. And Cindy, yeah. if he gives you if he gives you an estimate, you know, we can always do a seven thirty meeting yeah. to review yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I'll a see quick what he meeting says to review you an estimate because yeah. I, I I you know Skip's right. It, it should be taken care of. This these guys work up there and they train yeah. up there or whatever. We got a lot of money in that building. Yeah. Um, so. Because even things that he never even touched on has got to be done. Yeah, I would I would imagine I would imagine. So let's at least get it. Okay. You know that that part done. And put it. Well, my opinion is on that. I know. And put it I know. Back on the agenda for us. Okay? Yeah. We can take yeah. the whole ball and do this. There's been no update on the Sanchez. Okay. He hasn't been back. I was down there this morning. Now we'll call him and see. What was it? What's his last he, name? He's just going to do the silver coat and over that black on the outside. Okay. And when it's all done. It's full of sand. They, you know, we're all set. But he. He's got one with a silver coat and over that black on the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Selectman's comments? You guys have anything? No, this is mine. I'd like to do uh, ask a question, I guess. With the fire pond, it seems as though it was said the tri hydrants failed because they weren't blown out. 
Is that what I remember being said? Right. The dry hydrant, Sorry. the problem with the dry hydrant is they did blow it out. But the, and he used pressure, which you didn't have to do. Okay? So when they blew it out, it blew it out. The pipe separated the pipe, pipe come to yeah. the top. Well, I guess my question was going to be, should we be addressing that with the fire pond? It's all, that we just did? It's all fixed. It's, it's, it's not going to happen again if... if but I, I understood it had to be like an annual thing to... No. Oh. Because it's high enough. It's the only reason why they do that is because of the silt. When it's, okay. when it's uh, installed and sits on the bottom, kind of. Is that what you're saying? They, they're not supposed to be, but that's how evidently... That one was up. Right. But it wasn't up enough, supposedly. We never got anything okay. out of it when we drafted. Never. All right. It's just something that he had in his mind that we had to do. Okay. All right. When I put that in, it's three to four feet off the, off the bottom of it. Okay. So there's no way silt's going to get into it. Okay. So we're all set for, like, going into winter with that? Oh, yeah. Not a problem. That, if the, when the pond freezes and all that yeah. stuff? Yeah. It won't bother at all. Okay, anything else? Nope. Um, Essential items. What's that? Get a yes. So, stuff in the house. Okay, so I'm doing that. So, we've got abatements and supplementals. I notice in this thing from the county. I was going to say, what is it? Yeah, what is it? Penobscot County Unorganized yeah. Area Authority. So we we'll just do this before we do the. Yeah, let's do this first because I, I, that's why I was yeah. sort of. Uh, I can fill this out. I just wanted to see what your thoughts were on it because the. Um, it's a survey. Um, due to the rising cost of curbside trash collection, several cities. <coughs> Bangor area are discussing the possibility of conducting a study into the feasibility of forming a solid waste hauling disposal district. In support of this idea, the Penobscot County Commissioners have requested we reach out to our cities and towns to see if there is any interest in researching logistics and costs of forming local district, forming a local district in an attempt to control curbside collection costs. We have identified the communities within the 20 mile radius of Bangor, of which you are one, the currently, that currently offer curbside trash collection. If your community is interested in participating in the study and or possible, possibly becoming a member of the local hauling district, please return the attached survey to the address listed above or via email to um, Barb at the Penobscot County um, no later than September 15th. Right. So, so when they form this um, solid waste hauling disposal district, what is their? I don't know anything. I was saying, what is their, their point? This is just a survey to see if we might be interested, and they want information so they can come up with what they're going to tell us. I'm a believer in the group effort, but I don't see how we could partner with them if they're using we're using PERC and they're using the other. Yeah, that's what I was mm -hmm. just going to. Well, Penobscot County isn't. Right. Okay. And I, I say you can give them our information if you want yeah. and see what, I mean. It's not committing us right, to Right, we're not committed to anything. So, we're not signing so, on a dog line anywhere. Okay. So. I will fill that out to send it in there. Okay, that's fine. So this one, um, supplemental tax certificate. Yep. There's... Okay, so this is a supplemental tax warrant for four hundred and thirty dollars and sixteen cents. There's a, a tax warrant and a certificate for for two different properties. Right. right. So this one is for it's for Molly Krauss. Yeah, one's for Molly Krauss and one for the name is on the front page. It's not bad part. Yeah, those are supplements. But these are both two supplements. What happened was somehow in the process of the computer, she, um, when there was a change of hands on property, 
she billed both people instead of taking the old person out and the car off. So I'm sorry. Um, and I have the signable one too. Okay. So, um, All right. Do you want me to read these out loud? Are we discussing them? Or? That's up to you guys. Um, so we have one supplemental tax certificate for Molly Krauss for four hundred thirty dollars and sixteen cents, and we have one supplemental tax warrant and certificate for Scott Babcock for $1,562.64. I'll take them separately. I'll make a motion that we um, accept these or approve these yes. as written. Second. All in favor? Okay, so that's your supplemental tax certificates. And then these are abatements. So these are the same thing. Oh, he, these this are a big bit sold to Molly Krause. Right. Yeah, okay. Yep. That was sold in 2016. Okay. That was goes together. Personal property never taken off. Do you guys want me to just read these kind of through? Um, just who they are. Just who they are and the amount. Me, I read them. You read them, okay. You all sat with them, Skip? Yep. Okay. You all sat with them? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. I don't have to read them. I'm, I'm, we'd like to hear if you could. Would you, okay. Uh, we have Charlotte, I think it's Young. Uh, $314 homestead was admitted in Erin. Molly Krauss, this is to Dennis Whitcomb, $490 for the land of Molly Krauss. Dennis Whitcomb, $448.88. That was property sold. Gabriella Italia, uh, some property never taken off for $29.53. Clyde Babcock, should have been a different account number, it looks like. $1,562.64. Yes. CNM Invest. Sold 200 acres, man was in computer, uh, did not change value. $932.28. Jeffrey Sawyer for a whopping $3.84. And that's it. I make a motion that we accept these application for abatement of property taxes as read. All in favor? Second. Second. Oh, sorry. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Brian seconded it. We all voted on it. It's all a go. Okay. And, and we got signed notes. This must be good. This is for Kenneth Beckham.
I think that's the last one. Mm. Okie dokie. So I am going to make a motion that we adjourn and we're going to go into make a motion that we adjourn in per MRSA number one, section 405-6-A for personnel matter. We are going to go into executive session. I did do that as a motion. Second. All in favor. Thank you. I just wanted to know what they were for. If you're going to do this, then I'll be back for public comments and we'll go down for every one of these ones. Just make sure we um, pull the warrants for you. Okay, you should have that in here. If you're signing, you don't have the warrants. I mean, when you come back in October, we have them right here. And these will be in here to be signed for next month. And I'll be questioning them. Not these ones. No, next month that orange will be in here. I know, I understand that. Oh, no, I just said uh, make sure say. you give us the numbers of the warrants you want us to discuss. And we'll be able to explain you what you're signing. Yeah, I thought you said you had questions on these warrants. I do. These warrants. Yeah. Which are all signed. Yeah. And signed. And that's what we'll you will have next month. You see what I'm going with this, though? I see where you're going. Next month you do this month and next month. <laughs> okay. And it would have been easy to just answer our question. Basically. Yeah. Hey, Linda. I'm sure he'll give us more than that. That's what they were about. Yeah. I guess so. Really? 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 Watch my stuff. Yeah, you're trying to. What am I going to do with it? You got a lot from five.